In 1923, the town of Aurelia took delivery of its first motorized fire truck, a brand new American La France chemical and ladder truck. Here's a picture taken on Peter Street across from the fire hall shortly after the truck arrived. Look carefully and you will see its elaborate paint detail. Note the wheels equipped with hard rubber tires and no tread pattern. Early on the wheels were converted to accommodate pneumatic tires which no doubt made the truck ride and handle a little better. The American La France Fire Engine Company was one of the oldest fire apparatus manufacturers in the United States with roots that go back to approximately 1832. In the early 1900s, a branch factory was established in Toronto, and this is where Elias Type 75 was made. This brass plaque is affixed to the side of the body. The names of the mayor and other elected officials are engraved on it. A fire truck was a major investment for the town of Aurelia. It was practiced for many years to commemorate the town council with a plaque on any major equipment that was purchased. Here it is seen fighting a fire on the main street, probably in the late 20s. In 1920s. From the Grant family film collection is this marvelous clip of the fire truck roaring up Lackley Street. Another clip from the Grant Collection, taken June 13, 1932, shows the fire at Milligan Mill on West Street, just south of where the Canadian Tire gas pumps are now located. The F La France is featured in this section of the clip. The truck was in service until 1953, when it was replaced by a new vehicle. The town didn't know what to do with it, since it was too old for another town or village to want. At this point, the family of John Smith had a big part to play in this story. John is an instrumental volunteer and member of the board with the Aurelia Heritage Center. He's also an antique vehicle guru. The video you're watching was compiled from a presentation John gave to the Champlain Senior Service Club in December 2018. John's father, Gordon E. Smith, came to Aurelia in 1945 to found radio station CFOR. Always a car nut, he began to collect antique vehicles as early as 1948. By 1953, he'd gathered together a sizable collection. The town gave the truck to Gord Smith, and it continued to be featured in local parades. This shot shows the truck coming down West Street, pulling the CFOR mobile sound system trailer in the Santa Claus Parade. By the early 80s, Gord Smith was scaling down his collection. He offered to give the truck back to the city, but they weren't even slightly interested. Word got around that the truck was for sale, and Gord Maybe, a local hobbyist, bought it and put it on his Quonset hut, along with a lot of other project vehicles. By the early 2000s, Gord was ready to reduce his collection. He had fire truck enthusiasts from out of town eager to buy it, but he wanted to see it stay in Aurelia. He approached the Aurelia Heritage Center, resulting in a delegation going out to inspect it. Here's what it looked like that day, smack dab in the middle of Gord's shed. And here's Gord himself, lifting the hood so we could see the huge six-cylinder engine. It took a few weeks for Gord to clear the way for us to drag the truck out into sunlight for the first time in well over 20 years. As part of the deal, Gord rebuilt the water pump and helped install it. With a temporary gas can attached and a battery installed, it stuttered easily and sounded pretty good. Also, pretty loud. There's never been a muffler installed on this beast. The exhaust goes out through a huge straight pipe, several inches in diameter. It's not a vehicle you'd want to use if you're wanting to sneak up on somebody. Getting it running was easy. There was a lot to do to get it ready for the road. Russell Howes and his teenage sons Sean and Dale came to the rescue. They devoted countless hours to a thorough lubrication regimen, cleaning and adjusting this and that. We installed new tires, replaced the ones that had probably dated from the 20s, and had the gas tank clean and sealed. Finally, it was ready to take its first run. Here are Russell, Sean, and Dale on the newly resurrected La France on its maiden trip. Here's their view, looking out over that long, long hood. You can see the hand crank siren on the left of the huge spotlight. So, the truck was back on the road, but what to do with it from there? 
John Smith made an appointment to talk to the fire chief and his deputy chief. He didn't know what to expect. He had come with pictures in hand and his story rehearsed. As John started into his story, Chief Ralph Dominelli's eyes lit up. He couldn't believe that we actually had this truck and needed a plan for its future. He could not have been more enthusiastic. He said he wanted to get some of his staff to come and have a look at it. A few weeks later, a group of professional firefighters came to inspect the old truck, and they loved it. In very short order, Aurelia Heritage arrived at a written agreement with the Professional Firefighters Association. We own the truck, but they have in fact adopted it. They maintain it and operate it, and the chief and the city generously house it in the main fire hall. These people are heroes. Here are a couple of the key players, Glenn Higgins and Jeff Balkwell. Most everyone at the fire hall is a part to play in looking after the truck, but these two are the leaders in the initiative. Here's the truck being delivered to the former fire station on West Street. John Smith was putting a lot of faith in those two-wheel brakes as he backed it off the float. It looks pretty happy to be there, doesn't it? We can't even start to document the number of improvements that the firefighters have made to the La France. They started with a thorough cleaning, polishing, and got all the lights working and raised money to have the radiator rebuilt with new authentic cores sourced in England. Recently they had the seat repolstered in genuine leather. It's a majestic survivor. The truck looks so much better since the firefighters have worked their magic on it. In this heads-on view, you can see the headlights have different colored lenses. We've often wondered if at some point the red one was wired up to flash. They participate in all the local parades. Here they are in the Santa Claus parade. Note that the kerosene lanterns at the back of the truck are lit up. Here it is in the Scottish Festival Parade. Note that there isn't a band directly behind it. Maybe that's because the engine, which is not equipped with oil rings on the pistons, smokes a little bit. And here it is parked on Peter Street for a downtown festival. Sometimes there are special guests, like Mayor Steve Clark. The Old France looks pretty nice parked on the lawn of the Leacock Museum. Whenever it's on display, the fire truck is a fascination for children. Children are encouraged to climb aboard and try out the siren. It would seem that children playing on the truck is a tradition, as seen in this early picture of the truck. While fighting a fire, a real fire, on the main street of Arroyo, children are seen to be crawling all over the truck. It's worth noting that the children are not impeding the firefighting operation. Because Aurelia had hydrants, the important equipment required from the truck was quickly dispatched upon arrival on scene, and the truck itself was not directly involved in the firefighting effort. More happy kids enjoying the view. Now for a little more about the truck itself. It's powered by a six-cylinder engine with displacement of almost 900 cubic inches, or 14.7 liters. It has a T-head combustion chamber, meaning the intake valves are on one side of the pistons and the exhaust valves are on the other. You can see the intake manifold and carburetor here. When you accelerate the motor, it's like a toilet flushing in the carburetor. The truck gets about 3 to 5 miles per gallon of gasoline. The cylinders are cast in pairs. The valves run in the open with no valve covers hiding them. How's that for an exhaust manifold? Below it are the water pump, generator, and starter. Before you engage the starter, you have to walk around to the front and kick the compression release lever, located under the radiator, off to the side. Here's a quick instructional video from Captain Glenn Higgins of the Aurelia Fire Department explaining how to get this thing running. First turn the seat on, gas on under the seat. Uh, we turn the gas on to the carburetor. Uh, we're just... Uh, a little bit of leakage to the carburetor, so we're going to leave it on in the station. There's a decompression lever at the bottom of the radiator that uh, we engage and disengage. Now we're ready to start it. So on the control handles, 
We have a choke, which we engage. We have a gas lever and a, uh, a throttle advance. So we make sure we're in neutral and the parking brake is on. And we turn the coil on and the magneto. So there's two switches, there's two electrical systems, so we want to charge those. Gas in the center, as well as a clutch. We're in neutral, so we're not worried about the clutch. Uh, and there's a push button start, so as we start it, it kicks over, we're going to advance the timing uh, until it starts. Here we go. Final drive is by a double set of chains and sprockets. And here we are at Control Central. From left to right we can see light switches, ammeter, starter button, dash light, oil pressure gauge, and ignition switch. And here's a closer look at the electricals. Here we see the gas tank and the pressurized chemical tank. Most of France fire trucks of the period were pumpers. Not so with this one because it really had a hydrant system throughout the town. Most of France fire trucks were built in Elmira, New York. However, they had a Canadian assembly plant in Toronto. This radiator medallion indicates that it originated in Toronto. It has a few distinctly Canadian features. The Elmira built trucks had an eagle atop their bells. The Canadian trucks had a beaver. And here's a closer look at Canada's most famous rodent. Toronto was also featured on the pressure gauge for the chemical extinguisher on board. Another shot of the hand crank siren and spotlight. On the right, just over the steering column, is the speedometer. Legend has it that the truck once stopped 70 miles per hour heading out Atherley Road on the way to a fire. Those who've driven it more recently have been impressed with how well it shifts and steers, despite lacking a synchro mesh transmission or power steering. Aurelia firefighters have rounded up all kinds of correct bits, including special wooden ladders and special nozzles and a pretty lethal looking axe. They were even able to find these original La France lanterns. And of course, period uniforms. Note the banner citing Perry Automotive as being a sponsor of the truck. Restoration and maintenance of the La France would not be possible without the generous support of so many local sponsors. So, all in all, it's a pretty happy story. This wonderful old La France fire truck has remained in the community for almost a hundred years and it is loved and cherished as much today as it was way back in 1923. Aurelia really Heritage is grateful for the support provided by Glenn and Jeff and all the professional firefighters, Chief Dominelli and the City of Aurelia, and of course all of those who treasure Aurelia's wonderful heritage.